publishes all the news this week for the Nobel Prize. And Dr. Shah, he's going to try to explain to us maybe three or four different reasons why that might be happening. Let's welcome him. Like that, uh, 
inside the neutrons and protons, we see that they're held quarks that are held together by gluons. But the story will get a little bit more complicated in a few minutes, so remember this. Of course, Rutherford was the person who taught us this lesson. He put together a hundred years ago an ingenious experiment where he used a naturally occurring source of alpha particles to make a beam of these alpha particles to scatter on a very thin foil. He chose gold as a foil to use. It's easy to make into a very thin foil. And he set up a stream to see where the alpha particles went. But you can probably tell me what the prevailing ideas were at the time when he did this experiment for the atom. I think it was something called like the plum pudding model. There it is. A capital D. And then the fine word equation here becomes uh, written in a more compact way in terms of the capital D's, the covariant derivative. <clears throat> now, if we look at the, <coughs> this uh, new claim word equation, the transform uh, variables, <coughs> then the, in separate M, uh, talk about the, this uh, uh, new covariant derivative, written in terms of the old covariant derivative, and the gauge term, and then when it's written in. Okay, my name is Mark Callahan, I'm from TCU, um, working under Dr. Bruce Miller, and I'm going to talk about kind of a small variant of what my actual, my actual real research is, or to really kind of highlight a computational uh, method. So I have more slides than I have minutes, so I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly. Uh, motivation is why do people uh, want to talk about Monte Carlo or Pathogen Monte Carlo and quantum systems anyway? Well, it, it turns out that, as you all know, that uh, most analytical, you can't find an analytical solution for most quantum mechanics problems. And on top of that, um, you can strictly sample a free particle, but for any, almost nearly all potentials, you have to, um, you have to use a computational method. And the, and the most successful one that we know of right now is uh, the Pathogen of Monte Carlo, the Feynman Cup Pathogen of Method. So, um, here's a lot of stuff here. So, my problem, my problem is a 1D problem, um, and, uh, and I say quantum particle. It's a quantum particle on a lattice. I'm going to say QP. That's how I kind of like so the same quantum particle all the time. But um, developing pathological formalism, where QP is represented by a closed variable, separate and locked. Now, it's typically, you know, you represent with a uh, quantum particle by a polymer, a uh, closed chain polymer. Um, what I've done is I've gone through and I've derived the cases of all the analytical solutions for the free particle, and then I'm going to have the pathological analog with respect to that. So I'm going to look at certain things like the energy, mean square fluctuation, and the QP QP correlation function. Then I'll talk about the um, uh, computational uh, nuance that I kind of discovered for a couple months ago in the genetics. Okay, so again, um, I have a one dimensional lattice and a pathological analog. So that's two dimensional law. I can't draw uh, a pathological on a one dimensional law. Picture. So that would be what you'd see in two dimensions. So give you an idea of what what you what you can see. And of course, this thing wraps around, so it really is a closed chain. And so um, when you look at a, a quantum mechanics problem, you want to start off with solving solving short order question. Of course, that's a time independent uh, short order question. The operation operator notation. The the uh, Hamiltonian for this is actually going to be uh, this. Now you see the, the use the pointer, please. Oh yes, I'm sorry. The uh, other button. Yeah, so. Other button. Okay. Very good, sir. So you have the uh, con you have a little constant term here. This is the kinetic energy term. That's a potential energy term. So this is in the second quantization. So all that really says is you have the uh, creation annihilation operators. Create a particle in, uh, on the left, the right, destroy a particle on the left, or particle, sorry. create a particle on the left, destroy a particle on the right, create a particle on the left, destroy a particle on the right. So all, all that really says is that that's, that that's the motion involved. And of course, the C dagger C is just the uh, number operator. So. And so you have uh, essentially a parameter, and so the number of beads that can sit on that particular lattice site, that number multiplied by epsilon is really what you have. This is all in terms of um, non-dimensional units. You group all together, all, all your parameters together, make t equal to one, so the whole program is in terms of non-dimensional units. 